Look, I fully admit that I'm no expert in the field of therapy. I'm sure therapy has done a lot of good for a lot of people. All I have is my own personal experience, which was shocking, terrifying, and life-changing. On June 21st, 2005, I had my first and only therapy session of my life. It's a day which I, unfortunately, will never forget. I'll call my therapist Dr. Barnaby, just for the story's sake. Almost immediately, I mistrusted him. He was just far too perfect in his tailored beige suit, with his soothing, silky voice, that pristine glass of cool water he offered me when I sat down on the leather couch. He gestured to me warmly, made some sort of stupid joke, made fun of his own stupid joke, and relaxed himself in a chair slightly higher up than mine. Everything about Dr. Barnaby was inviting, friendly, and gracious. More than could be expected from any sane human being. I kept waiting to hear that doctor-to-patient, business-like tone of voice slip into one of his sentences, or for him to sigh and check his wristwatch. But no. He was there, looking at me speaking to me as if I were his first and only patient, and more than a patient, but a long-lost friend. And it made me nervous. All right, Hector, Dr. Barnaby said to me, putting on his glasses. Let's stop all the joking and fun and do something really boring and tedious. He made an exaggerated, serious face that looked slightly ridiculous as he peered over his glasses at me. And, even though I tried not to, I chuckled slightly. Look, I know therapy can seem a little strange or scary, especially at the beginning. So any time you feel at all uncomfortable or uneasy, just let me know, and we can take a break or do something else. Sound good, Hector? Yeah, I said. It sounded a little too good, in fact. Excellent. Barnaby smiled slowly, till the corner of his eyes crinkled and the gray stubble of his beard spread out across his face. Now, how about you tell me about your parents? I want to know what happened the night that they died. I stopped mid-breath and stiffened in my chair. I'm sorry. Maybe this is a bit early to discuss this particular topic, Barnaby said soothingly. Although... Barnaby paused, and I could see him thinking as he squinted up at the ceiling. Then his face relaxed into a smile, and he looked at me. Although, I was curious about your take on the whole issue. I mean, I've read the police reports and the papers, but I really wanted to know what you thought about the whole ordeal. I'd like to know how you feel about it, but only if you're comfortable telling me. No pressure. I did feel some pressure. I could tell that he really wanted me to open up to him, and, despite the warning in my gut, I have to admit that I did want to talk to Barnaby. Somehow, I felt as if speaking to him would make everything in the past better. I, I guess we could talk about that night. Excellent. And any time it's too much, just let me know we will stop immediately. Okay, thanks. All right. So, tell me about that day. Let's start when you got home from school. 
nothing had happened yet, is that correct? Yeah, no. Everything had been pretty, uh, normal, as far as I can remember. Were your parents arguing, fighting when you got home? Yeah, I, I think so, but that happened so... It happened all the time, so it, it just seemed normal to me. I see. Did they ever threaten to hurt each other? Not, not really. I, I don't think so. My mom and my dad had both promised to murder each other, several times. But I felt oddly embarrassed to say anything. Barnaby studied me from over his glasses, and I felt uncomfortable under his gaze. I see, he said finally. I shifted in my chair. I wanted this to stop, but I just couldn't manage to say anything, and Barnaby was already continuing. Well, did either of your parents threaten you? No. Your father did. I looked up at Barnaby, but he was looking down, taking notes. I, I don't think my father ever threatened me. Yes, he did, Hector. He told you he would beat you bloody if you ever got between him and your mother. I closed my eyes for a moment and racked my brain. Had my father ever threatened me? I had always assumed that he hadn't. I mean, I, I couldn't remember everything. But did he? Barnaby was still going. Where were you when you heard the gunshot? I, uh, I was in the basement. Doing what? Watching TV. I had been smoking marijuana, but same difference. What time was it? When you heard the shot? Uh, I, I don't know, like 7.30, maybe 8. It was 9.13 p.m. when your father shot your mother. Then he shot himself approximately five minutes later. Uh, okay, sure. I, I don't remember all the exact details, honestly. Well, of course you don't. What a tragic day. Not something you want to relive with your memory, I imagine. Would you describe that day as a tragic day, Hector? Yeah, uh, that's a good way to describe it. Is it, though? Dr. Barnaby was looking at me intently, with an unwavering and piercing look that made me look away. I shifted in my chair. Um, d doctor, I I'm feeling... I, I don't know. I, I don't feel very comfortable talking about this. I don't give a damn what you're comfortable talking about. Barnaby stood up abruptly from his chair and paced violently across the room. Tell me, Hector, did you love your parents? Did you even care for them one bit? Or were you simply relieved when both of them had died, and you now had both the freedom to do what you wanted and the public sympathy? What? What? I, I love my parents. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you, Hector. Barnaby walked and leaned over me, placing his hands on the arms of my chair. What about your parents did you really love, huh? Tell me. Tell me what you miss about them, day to day. They never spent much time with you, did they, Hector? Don't pretend like you're losing sleep now, thinking about your mommy and daddy, because you don't. In fact, Every once in a while, you probably feel slightly grateful that they're gone, don't you? No, 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 I, I want to go. Now, in the police report, it says that your father was drunk, but also heavily medicated when he murdered your mother. It seems he somehow consumed a large portion of your mother's medication, and that he really wasn't thinking straight. Now, I'm not going to presume you actually put her medication in his booze to drive him crazy. 
that you knew that the combined stimulants would drive your father to violence. But let's just say that would have been a good idea of yours, huh? What? What? No. Barnaby leaned back suddenly and smiled down at me. Then he walked over to his desk and sat behind it. I was dripping in sweat and my heart thudded against my chest. I blinked a few times and I remember feeling like I was in some sort of dream. I guess it was true that I really didn't miss my parents. They had never treated me well. And I had known about my mother's medication, of course. And I knew that if you mixed it with alcohol, I shuddered. Listen, Hector. Barnaby was calm now, and he sounded almost apologetic. Things can get a little crazy when we're talking about violence. I understand, really. And don't think I look down on you or that I judge you in any way. I just want you to... He paused for a few seconds, as if he was really trying to find the right way to express himself. I want you to be honest about the person that you... Ah. He ended with a broad smile that changed into a look of mischief. Do you want to see something? He asked slyly. I didn't answer, but Barnaby winked at me and reached into his desk drawer. I heard him laugh to himself as he looked inside, and then he pulled out a human hand severed at the wrist and placed it on the desk. Isn't it a beauty, Hector? Barnaby grinned up at me. I took this from an old lover of mine, back in my younger days. She and I had our disagreements. I stood up, my eyes glued to the severed hand, and walked slowly backwards towards the door. Barnaby continued talking, as if he barely noticed that I was there. You see, I know that I relish in violence from time to time, and I am very open and honest about it. Most people go through life only looking at the bright parts of their souls, but not me. I like to look at both the light and the dark the beautiful and the grotesque. I'm not deluding myself in any way. I know who I am. I felt my back reach the wall and felt for the door handle. I opened the door quickly. Right before I left, Barnaby looked up at me, directly in my soul. I'll never forget his parting words. Remember, Hector, above all else, just be yourself. <laughs>